All right, hold on. Open links. What do we got? We were supposed to start our reading already. Destiny's whole stick, he means shtick, is that he says to rile people up and get them to debate bro him on stream for clicks. All pass. His station in life is to suck the bull's sperm out of his wife's stretched out rectum. That's not someone on equal footing. Okay. That guy's thought about this uh, quite a lot. Jesus Christ. Got a weird lead on a story that people should look into. I got a call from a source close to Las Vegas Metro. The official story was that Joe Biden's trip was cut short last week due to COVID. However, according to this source, U.S. Secret Service informed LV Metro that there was an emergency situation involving Joe Biden and too close and to close necessary. I don't care more. This is his J6 Vice comments. President Mike Pence, who says the violence and destruction uh, red, taking place uh, this, in the capital obviously must this. stop, and it must stop now. If and people have to protest and people want to riot, I'd much rather they actually take it up with the politicians who make all the shitty laws that we have to live under, rather than burn their own neighborhoods and burn mom and pop shops and kill random pedestrians. This is much better. Also, these motherfuckers have achieved more in a single day than BLM and Antifa did in literally three months. Stand down. Let me paint the scene for you. Look at them. I can't tell. Is he a conservative or just retarded? Like anti-establishment or what? I have no idea. Right running now, a in here. Uh, you have White House <laughs> officials who are huddled in their offices who are Hell watching yes. all of this unfold. I spoke with one. He's a Turk living in Germany, by the way. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. What is this? Four years ago. What happened to Kaya? I remember discovering the podcast. He was the funny, sarcastic one with dark humor. Now he's basically pro-Trump, streaming right now on Twitch and leading a cult of Trumpists and literally idiots. I check out his Discord in the same audience. Also, lately on the podcast, he seems to lean more and more right. Honestly, I don't think anything has changed about him. Just the topics he brings up. It's been a very political time for the internet in America. Why was I linked this? Hey, you salty sped. I responded. Okay. I love Charlie, but hearing Kaya talk about, talking about Ukraine was just sad. It felt insane how he's blaming victims in a war where civilians are getting murdered and having everything stolen from them and being like, why are they fighting back? It just feels so gross to me. Oh. Oh, so he's just like on all the anti-establishment shit. Can you give me the Econ 101 answer to why rent control is a bad idea? Um, sure. Um, the problem with rent control, every time I talk about a basic econ thing, we should draw the things so that I get, I can get used to doing, cause this, the, the, the lines explain so much. <laughs> um, but I don't I feel like to do it right now. Um, basically the issue is, is if the market, okay. So prices are set when you've got a certain demand right? People who are willing to pay a certain price for a certain uh, good or service, right? And then based on that demand, based on the supply of those particular things, you're going to reach an, a market equilibrium. You're going to re reach an equilibrium price where the quantity demanded at a given price reaches the quantity supplied at a given price, okay? Um, the issue with rent control is what you're doing is you're lowering the price, right? Now, if we can imagine, okay, if we can imagine that the quantity demanded of a given good at a certain price is, um, we'll say a hundred, right? If the price decreases, then the demand increases, right? So rent control is doing a couple things. So one, it's artificially lowering prices, right? That the market could otherwise bear, meaning that people that are owning the property uh, are making less money, meaning either less renovations, less incentive to reinvest, um, you know, maintenance sucks, whatever, like these types of things. Um, 
Yeah, so there's there's damage there. Um, the winner in a rent control situation is going to be the person that buys the property or is renting the property because they're benefiting from the rent control. Um, but the 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 ultimate issue is well, and then another third party that's hurt would be somebody that would move into the city and rent it otherwise, but now they don't have the opportunity to because now they're bidding against people that don't have as much money um, because of the artificial cap on the rents, right? So you've got. Um, one group of winners are going to be the people that have the property, that are renting the property. That's a group of winners. A group of losers are going to be the people that own the property. And then another group of losers are going to be other people that could potentially rent the property. Um, the issue with housing stuff when you start doing rent control is rent control doesn't really help much other than it keeps some people in an area who might otherwise leave for other reasons. Either one, because they want to accurately change the consumption of their dwelling because you can overconsume housing. If you have a really good rent control property, you might not leave, not because you need to be there because you want to be there, but because it's really well rent controlled. Um, so it, it can lead to that. It could lead to also like people moving out because they generally just don't have the money anymore, which is sad. You can't afford it and you have to move, right? Um, but the issue is you're, you're trying to control what is fundamentally like a supply problem with, with artificial price caps. And at the end of the day, the only people winning are people who are already in the apartments. That's it. That's the issue. And that's kind of the annoying thing. Um, People will say that rent control helps poor people. That's not true. Rent control does not help poor people. Rent control helps people who already have a unit. Full stop. That's it. That's who rent control helps. Um, so if a poor person wants to move into the city, doesn't matter. They're fucked because they can't find, there's no supply of housing. Uh, wealthy people can't, um, you know, a poor person in the city who wants to move into another unit might not be able to because it's rent control over there. The guy doesn't want to leave, right? Rent control only helps people that are stuck in a particular area. Yeah, that's the issue. Somebody said, you need more public housing. It's the only solution. No. Housing, in my opinion, and I think most economists I think would agree with this. I've never seen one that disagrees. Um, rent control... Uh, Housing is solved for pretty well by free markets. Um, if there's places to build homes, people will build. Developers love to develop. People love to rent. There's a whole market for it. There's a ton of capital in it. Um, like Housing is a pretty easily solved for thing by markets. The issue is that you have to cap how many housing units can be built. And that's done on the zoning side of things. And it's also done on the physics side of things because there's only so much land to build on, right? Um, but, yeah. Um, wait, why can't a poor person move into the rent controlled house? Is it just competition and waitlist and stuff? Because, there, because the person living in the house probably doesn't want to leave because <laughs> it's rent controlled. He's got a really good deal. Um, I know people like this personally right now. I know people in Toronto and New York city. And then I've read articles about them as well, where if you've got a really sick rent controlled unit, you might even like move in a friend there and illegally sublet and then go do some other shit or whatever. You don't want to lose that unit. Cause it's so, um, it's just such a prime rent controlled unit that you, you, yeah, you never want to leave. Why cap the amount of housing built isn't more better? Um, for a variety of reasons, but eh, none good in my opinion. Why are zoning laws necessary? Um, zoning laws are important because typically we don't like to live near, like you don't want to live right next to a sewage dump or a power plant or like industrial stuff. We'd like to separate our cities a bit. Although I think it's a little bit, we're overzoned. I think in the US. I think it's better to have more mixed zoning, but. Just curious, you rich, but you live in an apartment, why not buy a house? Because uh, I don't want to deal with the maintenance of a house. I don't want to deal with the extra money that you sink into a house. I don't know if I'll even make my money back on it if I end up moving in a couple years. Um, markets fluctuate too much. Like, it's just no, I have no desire. I'd rather just rent and have the flexibility relating to rent and the smooth um, cost of an apartment. Doesn't the argument fall flat because if everywhere is rent control, you're not missing out on leaving, no? Well, I don't understand what that means. What are some things a city slash town can invest in to increase the quality of life of its residents? I don't know. Things like nice streets and roads and streets and roads, are the same thing, sidewalks. I don't know. Public investment in infrastructure so that places don't look run down and fucked and destroyed. Why is public housing bad? It sounds like it worked quite well in many cities. Uh, it didn't work well because it was public housing. It probably worked well because it's just more housing. You don't need public housing. Just build more houses and people will move into them. <laughs> like, pe pe the mar markets can deal with housing pretty well. Again, there's like robust industries around development. You don't need that to be like publicly funded. You just need to zone for it and then it'll, it'll be built. Zimmer question, wouldn't the market itself already be good enough? Um, organic zoning. If a place was next to a sewage and shit, people might would be willing to live there for a cheap enough price. No, nah, because then you get into a weird like race to the bottom thing that's probably not good, I don't think. Sam Harris has just had 
and Applebaum on his podcast, the latest Russia conspiracy theory is that Elon Musk had business interests in Russia and had spoken to Putin. Elon then talked to David Sachs, who then spoke with J.D. Vance, which explains why Vance doesn't want to spend money in Ukraine. Uh, okay. Again, I, when you hit a certain level, I don't think the money is what's driving Elon. I think it's going to be other things at this point. I don't think it's just going to be financial stuff. Like other types of influence or whatever, maybe, but not... How do you explain that rent control measures were created if the market was solving this before? Well, the market's not solving it because your supply is kind of like artificially limited because of zoning. But I'm saying that like, if you zone for more houses, they'll be built and people will buy them and people will either rent them or mortgage them and own them. Like, Jesus Christ. Hi, everyone. Welcome our new mega corporate overlords owning whole cities. Yeah, that's not really happening, my dude. The issue is poor people living in expensive areas, right? That's the inefficiency creating the need for rent control. Um, it's just build more houses and prices will come down. Pay said, Bayzid. Uh, Huh, somebody made this. Seems like building more houses is bad for business then. Ooh, a little bit, which is one of the uh, conundrums you run into when, you, when it comes to nimbyism. Um, if you own property, if you own a house in a particular area, and somebody's talking about building a high-rise apartment in your area, you don't want that because it's, it might lower the value of your property. And in America, because we're so fucking stupid, and we have um, so much of our worth so much of our net worth and wealth for individuals, especially for middle class and poor people, is tied up in their stupid fucking homes. People really, really, really don't like that. Okay, what was this? Huh? Away from your hot steam and water. Away from my hot steam and water? Yeah. Wait, what? What did I? I, I couldn't understand her. Why? Did she, did she say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus? She's like, is she just, she's just joking, right? And he, is he just joking? I, oh, I was rebuking you in the name of Jesus. I, you better fucking not, I swear to God. She wants to throw boiling water at him. I can't tell what her attitude is right now. Oh, wait, is she threatening to throw? Hold on, I'm back one more time. I can't tell what the fuck is going on here. Let me I'm gonna show y'all my paperwork. I, uh, what is your last name? Uh, Shouldn't have to think about your last name. Okay. You're not in trouble. I just need to text. Huh? Massey. What yeah. You have an ID that makes things so much easier. I, I just need to get just a driver's license will do, and now I get out of your hair. I want to show y'all my paperwork. I will what? get your paperwork. What paperwork? Okay. I got some paperwork. We'll just get your ID real Well, let's get your ID session. first, and then... One task at a time here. Okay. Here, grab your ID for me. Uh-huh. Okay. Your ID. One task at a time. So let's do an ID, and then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. You can have that stack right there, maybe? Okay. One second. Just check on her. I'm going to make this. 
Um, we don't need a fire while we're here. Right. Okay. Wait, what? I'm 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 so confused. It's on YouTube, so I mean, it should be safe to look at, but. Super dead. Fuck. <laughs> I was on, I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. <laughs> yeah, can we go get a tourniquet for her fucking head? Okay, God, fuck me. Alright, well, we're watching now. God damn it. What? I'm so confused. What happened? Would you ever join Charlie's podcast to argue with Kaya? Um, yeah, but they would, he would, that guy is the type of guy that would never talk to somebody like me. Trust me, I can tell. She was going to throw boiling water on them, no? I don't understand what you mean when you say that. You know that, like, I don't know how old you guys are, but you know that, like, water doesn't come out of the tap boiling, right? <laughs> you, that doesn't, that's not a thing, right? Okay, responding to a 911 call, or not, I'm sorry, 911 call, making contact with the caller, Sonia Massey. She had it on the stove. Okay, at her residence during the interaction inside the home of Miss Massey. Um, former deputy Sean Grayson discharges firearms striking Miss Massey and killing her. This interaction was captured on body, uh, camera, blah, blah, blah. He got charged with three counts of first degree murder. One count, agri okay, well. An arrest warrant was issue issued for great. Oh, okay, I don't care about this. It's the cop. Did it say what the call was for originally? She reported a prowler. Okay.
Okay, wait. Before we get to this, real quick, what is this? Read the sign in the video. Beware, a horse may bite or kick. Okay, or kick or bite. What the fuck? She was still gasping minutes after they shot her down. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can happen with the brainstem, and there are other autonomous or semi-autonomous functions in the body that can carry on for a bit after, even if you've suffered like critical brain injuries. Like she's either got some type of mental issue or some kind of drug problem right now. I have no idea, but. See if I can help me. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Uh, I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. We checked your front yard. We didn't see nobody. Yeah, so nobody's out here. You didn't see anybody. Nope. Nope. Oh. Is this thunder or what is the noise in the background? Uh, or. I'm guessing. The whole area. Okay. What take you so long to answer the door? Oh, oh I was fireworks. To okay. Put on some clothes, sir. I'm sorry. I was trying to get. I got gotcha. you. All sorry. right. Is there anything else we can do for you? Yeah. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, no, sir. Okay. No, okay. Sir. All right. You doing all right mentally? Yes. Sir. Sure? My medicine. Stuff, my all right. Okay. I love y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> all right. That's not your black car, though. The SUV. Mm. Whose is it? Uh, You don't know? Someone just parked it in your driveway? Mm -hmm. They brought it to my driveway. And just left it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's run back. Yeah. 19, I got a 20 point. Does anyone else live here with you? David Mary, 43556. You got a name? You got an idea Take it to me real quick. Attach this. See who we spoke to. Um, I'm so confused why they entered and questioned her if she was the one who made the call. Well, th so they've gotten a call from her that there's an intruder. The lady seems a little bit kind of like weird or sketchy. Like there's already like, I, I imagine if you're a police officer in the situation, everything's already kind of feeling a little bit strange. Something is like not right right now, right? The woman seems like she either is on drugs or is having a mental issue. And then there's a car here that's not supposed to be here. And you've gotten a call for an intruder. So there's like... Yeah, there's like weird stuff that's happening right now. So I imagine the cops probably want to investigate a bit more to see if they can get a handle on what's going on. They're probably going to try to get a run an ID on the car or whatever, on the plate or the VIN, and, and they're, maybe they'll go and ask around. I will see what's going on. Someone says she's got a hospital wristband on. Um, at this point, there's like a whole bunch of things that could be going on. Another woman in the house could have made the call, and she's come to answer the door now. 
um, instead. I don't know how they verify who's actually answering the door, if they're the right person or not. Um, it could be that she made the call, but there's somebody inside that doesn't want her talking to the cops. So now she's like outside, like too afraid to say anything um, because he's got a friend or a child or somebody else inside. Um, it could like there's like a billion different things that could be going on right now. And it's hard to say. So if you're a police officer here, I imagine you probably want to investigate more. And she also seems a bit, um, she seems uh, in duress, right? She, like, oh God, oh God, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, when did he go inside? Oh, he's talking to her and then he goes in over there. Okay. Yeah. European here, every time I see stuff like this, it seems to me that US cops are way more on edge than in the EU. Like, is the hiring process for cops in the US just more shit? Um, is it more guns being present? Is it just training? Why mag dump it to someone that's holding a pot of water? One is a much greater presence of guns, probably scares cops more. And two is um, I don't think our cops receive as much training as they tend to, I think, in European countries, I think in general. It's probably those two factors play pretty heavily into it. Who joined? Oh, hi, what's up? Well, that's me. A quick two questions. Yeah, so, what's up? easy with uh, my soldier friend got injured and we had to do like a surgery very fast and all sorts of things like that. And I missed my job, our boy Joe Biden dropped out. So <laughs> apparently now we have Kamala Harris and everyone told me it's very bad because she's like super awful and hateable. And I was like, okay, what did she do? So I started like looking up and all I found on Russian social media, like Telegram, you know, things like that, is that black cunt, um, she devil and, you know, uh, sucks dick as opposed to advance her career. Yeah, there's so have the biggest I mean, issue that she has is um, I, she maybe is not like the best speaker or doesn't inspire much like excitement or whatever. But um. I mean, she's she's got her background is decently impressive. Like, um, I think that's like the biggest criticism you can have of her. She, she's not, she's not like she doesn't have any crazy scandals or any insanely stupid shit. Yeah, Mo most people just don't like her because she's a woman, and then it's because you've got your centrists that are actually conservatives, and your conservatives just don't like her because they wouldn't like anybody that the Democrats put up. So it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the far left so people, actually, progressives, don't like her because they want like Bernie Sanders or something. So yeah. That was my second question because I was kind of shocked by. Not shocked, but I was kind of like confused because mm -hmm. uh, rightoids, I get it, you know, <laughs> but uh, with the with the people like that are progressive or like leftoid type of people, weren't they the one I saw like your I, I tried to watch your talk with Cenk, I think, uh, and uh, Uyghur, uh -huh. I think, right, uh, from Young Turks. And uh, I can't tolerate this person. I just can't. <laughs> Yeah. I can't listen to him talk. So I listened to her for a little bit and I was under the impression that he wanted to remove Biden because he's old and senile and all of that and uh, is not fit right for the office. But mm -hmm. apparently it doesn't matter because uh, they don't want any sort of person there, even if they're younger, unless it's a commie. Yeah, don't ever listen to the far left uh, and don't listen to anybody that calls themselves a centrist or right leaning. They have no good opinions on any of this. So they're worth ignoring. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> I was hoping I did, I got it wrong, but seems like I did not. Yeah. yeah. Well, have fun, be careful. Bitches be lying, you know? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Somebody mentioned Jussie Smollett. Was, she inv was Kamala involved in faking the Jussie Smollett stuff? Why did, we, why did we type that in chat? Here 
she just said she supported him when it was your okay. So one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know. I'm praying for his quick recovery. This is an attempted modern day lynching. No one should have to fear for their life because of their sexuality. Was this after it was all faked or was this just when it first came out? Or when it was going to court or whatever? I, okay, who cares? All right. Okay, wait a second, sir. You can hang up, Carlos. Hold on, you're there with the deputy, correct? No, hold on, okay? You can hang hold up. Hold on for what? Uh, just one second, okay? All right, wait, hold on. Okay. I got the sheriff department. Hello? Yeah, I need. Okay, I need to Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, this woman is. Something is going on here. The one, the biggest criticism that I have of, um, the biggest criticism that I have of police officers in the United States is the, they don't have really good ways to deal with crazy people, I think. Um, like when you, like some, like something is very clearly off here in terms of the lady's mind. She's either has mental issues or something is going on. Um, and now looking into this, it looks like something is very wrong. And it feels like police officers are expected too much to be like Swiss army knives where they have to deal with it. Like they are like, they're like animal control. They're, you know, climbing roofs to save cats. They're supposed to deal with, uh, you know, family domestic issues. They have to deal with like people having mental health, like breakdowns or psychotic episodes. They have to deal with, and then all the ordinary like police work for criminals is just way too much shit. It's way too much shit. Department here, but I was coming for help from y'all. Okay. Are you there with me? They're here in my house right now. Okay, I'll let you go and talk to them. No, hold on, wait a second. Is she is this nine one one she's on the phone with? They're in my house coming for help from y'all. Hello? I know the you are here. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I need um I got the sheriff department here, but I was coming for help from y'all. I've got the sheriff's department here, but I was calling for help from y'all. Are these like mental health people? I wonder. They're here in my house. Why do people call the stepping down of Joe Biden an insurrection? Am I stupid? Uh, because conservatives project everything. Anytime a conservative tells you something, um, it's they're tell they're revealing what they do. Right now. Okay, I'll let you go and you talk to them. No, hold on, wait a second, wait a second, sir. Okay. You can hang up, Todd. Let's go. No, hold on, okay. <laughs> You can hang out. Probably a relative? This doesn't sound like a relative at all. Unless their relative is like a healthcare professional or some other type of... Uh, you're there with the deputy, correct? No, hold on, okay? Mm -hmm. You can hang hold out. Hold on for what? Uh, just one second, okay? Okay, I'll let you go and you talk to them. Okay. What's up? Like the police right now are, are very, very, very relaxed. I'm curious how the temperature gets turned so far up, right? So you're in an unknown house. Maybe, now maybe this cop, because he's already spoken to her, he feels more relaxed for some reason, but they're in an unknown house. The lady's exhibiting kind of like weird behavior. Um, reaches for a bag here that I don't know if this cop has seen her grab before. Starts digging around and this cop doesn't give a fuck. His hand's not on his gun. He's not telling her to like slow down or to let him like check it out first or whatever. He's just like chilling, yeah. Please. Yeah. Hey, I just need your name so we can get out of here. Has there, was there any damage previous to your car? Uh, previous, yeah. It was. Yeah, what was the damage? A dent, I believe. Just as a heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Okay. Cops have things that they can legally do, and you've got rights and all of that, okay? But if you're not aware of your rights, cops will push and push and push because, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on uh, most of the time. Um... If you ever, when, 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 a, when a cop walks up to you and a cop is asking you questions, all right, there's a few things that are going on. One is they're trying to see if you're like sober, 
and I mean that in more ways than one, not just are you not on drugs, but like, are, do you have a good awareness? Are you like very lucid? Or are you like kind of being like weird or crazy? That's the first thing. The second thing is you just see uh, how shady you are, right? If they ask you a question like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? And you're like, oh, um, you know, just, you know, I'm just walking out here, you know, or whatever. If you start giving weird answers, um, they're going to start looking at you funny. They're going to ask more questions. Like, okay, well, what's going on? Are you, are you around? Are you from around here? Do you have friends here? And if you're like, oh, you know, I just like walk through this neighborhood. I live five miles away. Like, okay, well, did you drive? They're going to ask you more questions. Figure what's going on, right? So everything's weird here. That car is kind of like broken up front. Initially, she said she wasn't sure whose car that was. And now she's saying that it's her car. I don't know why. Um, oh, wait. Okay. I, I think if, as we go through this, we might get the other cop's camera. You missed where they ran the tag of the car at return to a female showing at 1099 with warrants. They are trying to confirm it's her. Oh, that might make sense too. Okay. So if she has warrants, they're confirming the identity so that they can arrest her. That would make sense as well. Yeah. Windows. Oh, that it was something that happened earlier. Okay, perfect. Uh, what is your last name? Uh, What's the best way to maintain your rights and privacy while not appearing sketchy? Oh, you can be sketchy if you want. You have every right, every single right to be sketchy. If a cop comes up to you and he's like, hey, what are you doing here? You can say, oh, uh, I just jogged here from Minnesota. Cop's like, really? You're like, yeah, I can run 1,000 miles per hour. I was like, do you know anybody here? No, I just like to walk in this neighborhood. At some point, like, you, well, right at the beginning, you tell the cop, hey, listen, do you have a reasonable suspicion that I'm currently committing a crime? Meaning, do I match the description of a suspect for somebody that called in? Or have you observed me where it looks like I'm, you, you can reasonably be suspicious of me committing a crime? If the answer to those two questions is no, then you can tell the cop, fuck off. I don't want to answer any questions. Get the fuck out of my face. And you can walk away. But if you're doing anything illegal, so if you're in somebody's yard, for instance, if you're trespassing on private property, that could be in somebody's yard or whatever, then the cop has the right to detain you. And detention means that he can um, take away your freedom for a period. It's not an arrest, but it's a temporary detention so that he can perform an investigation to see if you are doing a crime. And then he can figure out at that point if he wants to arrest you or not, right? Um, but yeah, all of this conversation when a cop is like talking to you to figure out if things are sketchy or not, you don't technically have to do it. You're going to say, I'm good, fuck off. Now, as I say that ordinarily, this situation is going to be different because she called the cops. Once you call the police officers for, um, for a 911, um, after you've done a 911 call, I think the, the rights or whatever might change a bit because they might have a right to do an investigation because now they've got reasonable suspicion automatically because a, um, because a, because a call to 911 has been made. Um, yeah. Whoops. Okay. What's up? Um, I got some paperwork. Can you grab that Bible, please? Yeah. Hey, I just need your name so we can get out of here. Has there, was there any damage previous to your car? Uh, previous? Yeah, it okay, was. What was the damage? Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. Cops may lie to you and claim you have to do something when you don't, and it's easy to succumb to that pressure. Um, that might be true. I don't see videos of that very often. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there are times when cops do that, but generally what cops will do is they'll just ask you to do things, and because we're social creatures, usually you just do them, right? But you don't have to, but people think they have to, but they don't. Like a cop might pull you over and say like, hey, do you mind if I take a look through your back seat? And you might say, mm, no, uh, I don't want you to look through my back seat. And cops say, I mean, I would, I would really like to. It would help me a lot. Um, it would help both of us a lot if you just let me look through your back seat so I can make sure everything is clear and okay, right? A cop will say something like that, and maybe you're hearing like, fuck, okay, yeah, I have to. You don't have to. No. Unless he's just, he, he, let me put it this way. If a police officer has a legal right to do something, he's never, ever asking you to do it. He'll just do it, okay? It's not, he's not gonna, they're not gonna ask questions. The best example of this is, uh, <laughs> um, are currently employed by the Poyos Hermanos chain, is that correct? Yes, I am. What do you do there? Well, to the camera. Like, if a cop has something he can arrest you with, he's not going to ask you questions, he's just going to do it, right? Uh, 
a dent, I believe. Well, what about windows? Oh, that, it was something that happened earlier. Okay, perfect. Uh, what is your last name? Uh, Should not think about your last name. Okay. You're not in trouble. I just need to Massey. Text. Huh? Massey. What? What you have an ID? That makes things so much easier. I, I just need to get just a driver's license will do, and I'll get out of your hair. I want to show y'all my paperwork. I will what? get your paperwork. What paperwork? Okay. I got some paperwork. Well, just get your ID. Real well, let's get your ID test. first, and then one task at a time here. Okay. Here, grab your ID for me. Uh -huh. Yes, I saw Lex just on my tweet. I, I'm not. I'm not going on that back and forth right now. Please. Yes, I saw it. Jesus. Okay. Your ID. One task at a time. So let's do an ID, and then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. You it is usually better to listen to cops, even if they are wrong, and fight it in court. Uh, you should really understand your rights. Uh, I would absolutely not say that as a blanket default statement. If a cop has pulled a gun on you, or whatever, and you're like in a light, then yes, then you listen to a cop, absolutely. But if a cop walks up to you, let's say that you're, you know, you've got drugs on you or something. If a cop walks up to you, and a cop says, hey, um, you know, can I go through your bag? I just want to see what's in your bag. You're walking around. I haven't seen you here before. I walk around a lot and you know, and you're like, no, I don't really think I want you to go through my bag. And the cop's like, mm, come on, like, let me, let me take a look. If you give the police officer your bag and if you've got marijuana in there or some illicit, some narcotic and he sees it and then he arrests you and you go to jail and you get charged with that, you voluntarily let him search your shit. You're fucked. You're fucked at that point. Right. But if the cop says, Hey, I want to search your bag. And you're like, no, I don't think I do. You, do you have a reasonable suspicion of me committing a crime? No. Am I being detained? No. Okay, well, fuck you. If the cop, like, takes it from you, he tackles you, and then he takes the bag and he searches it, I don't, you're not charged with a crime at that point. It, it would get tossed because he didn't have the right to, um, he, he didn't have the right to forcibly take your shit. So just because a cop asks you something doesn't mean you should always give in. It really depends on the circumstance. It depends on the, the level of guilt you think you have. Like, for me, I don't carry around illegal shit with me generally. So I don't, if a cop wants to search my shit, I don't give a fuck. If it makes me feel better, if I think it'll get me out of a ticket, then fuck it, I don't care. But be careful with that because like if a friend, I, I think that, I think that possession it, when it comes to cars, I think is a strict liability offense. Like I think if a cop finds drugs in your car, I think it's always a crime for the person driving. I don't think it matters whose it was. I don't think they have to prove that in court. They just have to prove that it was in your vehicle and you're driving. I think, I think. Um, but you should, you should be aware of your, you should be of your, aware of your rights, yeah. Can't they always say they have reasonable doubt? I mean, they could, but they, I mean, if you fight it in court, they'd have to prove that. Destiny, you're a lot more charitable to cops than you should be if only it were that simple. Um, everything that I just said was true. Everything you see, whenever some fucking retarded fuck types some shit like that, you're a lot more charitable to cops than you should be if only it were that simple. This is every single time. This is a 18 to 22 year old white male who has never dealt with a police officer his entire fucking life. The only thing he knows about cops are things that his other white friends have shown him on college campuses when they all get together in their fucking BLM Antifa suits and they LARP like they're fucking social justice defenders or some shit and then they watch videos of like the same like three cop killing a black person over and over and over again and they think that every single police encounter you have is a police officer looking to arrest you or murder you, okay? That's not true. The vast majority, 99% plus of police stops are usually a cop seeing if there's any, some, if there's some weird shit going on, right? What are you doing here? What's your name? What, like, what's going on? Like, that's 99% of the time, that's what cops are looking out for, okay? Will you run into people that are fucking around or that are bad cops that do bad shit, that like have an issue, they're having a bad day and they fuck you over or some shit? Yeah, that definitely happens. But if you go through life with the most adversarial attitude possible for police officers, you're probably gonna have a lot more bad experiences. But hey, if you want to, that's on you. Have bad experiences, go on social media, cry about it, maybe get shot and killed and fucking, you know, we'll all be there, you know, at your funeral for it. Just... Uh, and then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. Are you just uh, that stack right there, maybe? One second. Just check on her. What do they say? You match a description and they're doing an investigation. I believe that most, um, I believe that most people will have, um, the right to do, uh, like after a police officer does a stop, usually you can call into the department and request information about it, like if there was a phone call made. I think that's the policy, my guess is that's the policy of most police departments, but uh, you can check for that. The problem is 99% of people's interaction with police are at during stops and you have virtually zero rights at a traffic stop? Pennsylvania v. MIMS, police have the right to detain and search anyone at a traffic stop for any reason. You are also required to identify yourself. The am I free to go is an internet meme that doesn't work in real life. I don't know what you're talking about. Co I don't believe that cops have the right to search your car every single time at a traffic stop. 
they I think they have to they have to see something in the car. Otherwise, there'd be no point in having a, a drug dog go around the car to see if they could smell marijuana. Cops don't have don't have free reign to just like search everything. Right? Maybe in some states they do. I've never heard that before. Um, you are required to ID yourself. I have never heard. I, we can just look it up, I guess. My understanding is you're not required to ID. Um, but they can always claim they smell weed. Just don't, okay, just don't go outside. Every cop is going to lie about every single thing, and every single thing is out to get you, and every single thing is going to fuck you. Go, go for it. Knock yourself out. Well, none of you fuckers have even been to fucking criminal court before. Shut the fuck up. It's, it's like all a bunch of, like, white kids. Like, oh, I can't lie that every day. Oh, the fucking time. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you're right, bro. Right Check on her. So, I don't need this. Um, we don't need a fire while we're here. Right. Okay. I'm going to Okay. <laughs> Where are you going? Huh? Where are you going? Uh, away no, from your hot steaming water. Away from my hot steaming water? Yeah. Oh, I was repeating you in the name of Jesus. Huh? Repeating you in the name of Jesus. You better fucking not. I swear to God, I'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face. Do you think that? Do you think that he heard her saying, "I'm gonna shoot you in the name of Jesus"? Do you think he heard that? Is that possible? I'm so confused. Drop the fucking pot! Drop the fucking, drop the fucking pot! Drop the oh, fuck. And then he's... Fuck! He blocks it. Is there... Is the second camera available or no? The only thing that like I could possibly see is like okay, so we'll go we'll go forward. Is if like right here? And drop the fucking pot. So she has the pot of water with her. So she's holding it, and then she gets down. The only thing I can see is if right here she's like standing up to throw it at them, but he's blocking it. We can't see the, but we can't see. But we can check. On his camera, I guess. Apparently it's here. Okay, hold on. This is, <laughs> it might be violent. Oh, there's no audio for this? Oh, shit. Wait, what is she? <sighs> I can't tell if she's, what is the red thing? That's not the pot of boiling water, is it? it there's no way, right? Or... Because she stand no, this is not a pot of boiling water. She stands up. She's not holding the pot, right? No, the pot's like over there. And then she stands up. Ooh, and it looks like she goes to throw something at him. <laughs> yeah, I think she. I, it looks like she tries to throw something, like a, her, the glove. It's just so. It seems like the woman is like crazy. Like she's got like some kind of like mental illness problem and that this just like escalated so much for no reason. Hold on, I'm so confused what's happening here. Okay. 
this horrible fucking... Oh, wait, 1080p? No, I don't even know if this helps much. Okay. Okay, she picks up... She's got both mitts. I can't see what's happening here. Oh, wait. Oh, no. It looks... You can't see, but it looks like right now... She's standing up to grab the pot and then throw it at the cops. I think that's what's happening. Look, she looks like she's standing up and then there's the, oh, Jesus Christ. And then he shoots her. You can see the pot here, and you can see the steam coming off of it right here, yeah. Do you think they have a duty to retreat there instead of shooting? Uh, I don't think that they should be... I feel like it escalated more than it needed to, but... I feel like the lady is probably crazy. Holy cutty. How did this get minimized? Come bring us back. No! What? <laughs> Do you think the murder one charges him saying, oh, I don't know why the murder one, maybe they just charge down the line or whatever? Is it, maybe they do that? Uh, this is definitely not murder one. Well, well, no, because murder one's pretty similar. I don't know what the murder statutes look like in this state, but I would assume like some kind of manslaughter or whatever. Here, turn that off. I'm really curious what the warrants are for. And your ideal world would be convicted? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure I'd have to think about it a lot. It looks like she was scared and simply threw the pot out of defense. Mm, no. There was some, there, my guess is going to be, there's one of two things either happening here. I don't know if more info has come out about this. My guess is one of two things happening. Either one, some kind of severe mental health or drug issue, or two, she had really bad warrants. Um, I'm leaning more towards the former than the latter because she doesn't seem to be acting like a guilty person trying to get the cops to go away, more so than like a crazy person who's got to be like, Second guy turns on the audio after the shooting happens. Oh wait, hold on. Sure, what does he say? Three. Wait, this is the. You want to run down real quick? <clears throat> Fuck. Wait, when does the second body cam start again? Oh, right here. Dude, she's she done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. <clears throat> God damn it. God, fuck. I, dude, I'm not taking fucking boiling water to the fucking head. And look, it fucking came right to our feet, too. God damn it. God damn it. 
Damn it. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Holstered out. Let her fucking just... There's nothing we can do, man. Fuck. You good? Alright. Fuck. Well, I mean, you know, what else do we do? I'm not taking hot boiling water to the fucking face, and it already reached us. <clears throat> They got a 52 in wrap? Yeah, 1078. 318, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood from the head. <clears throat> I'll go get my med kit. I mean, go, go get I mean, there's not much we can do. Was the cops supposed to pull the gun and yell at her reasonable? Even if she did say, I'm going to shoot you, they can see that she doesn't have a gun. I mean, she's going to their kitchen. She could have anything there. I'm curious what the warrants were for. That's what I'm really curious about. Fuck! Do we got any call history with her being 1096? Oh, true. She had him grab the Bible and then said, I'll rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She might have thought he was a demon, maybe. Explain a lot. 1096 is a mental patient, is it? What is the state for this? Illinois. He said 1096? Oh, shit, that was it. Um... Oh, mental subject. Negative. I was telling that was what that was. Yeah. She's in the kitchen. Sergeant, who, uh, no. Let's just chill out out here. Just search right now. Are you guys secure? Yeah, we're secure. Is that covered? No, it's just her in the house. She's 1096. What do you think about them waiting uh, to give her first aid? I don't know what the standard is for first aid with, like, with obviously severe injuries, right? Like if somebody gets decapitated or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Also, I'm not sure if you can first aid a head injury, like a traumatic First aid kit, head injury. Would it be considered traumatic or would it be considered, what do you call it? Tra trauma just means like hit, right? Um, what kind of injury penetrates skin? What do you call it when it's like, is it penetrating trauma? Hold on. First aid, penetrating trauma for head. Apply firm pressure to the wound with sterile gauze or a clean cloth, but don't apply direct pressure to the wound if you suspect a skull fracture. Yeah, I'm not, I don't even know if there is first aid that you do for, like, somebody gets shot in the head. I have no idea. I'm not sure.
The only thing you can do with a GSW to the head is CPR, at least as a first responder. The brain is so sensitive, they've been applying pressure to the brain will result in death. Yeah, that's right, because you can't really, yeah. Wait, GSU, oh, gunshot wound. Is there anything you think we can do for? No. All right, I'm not even gonna waste my med stuff then. Oh, somebody else in chat said that's wrong. You wanna run down real quick? Nope, not yet. All right. All right. House is cleared. She was the only one. Where's she going? No, she had a boiling water and came at me with boiling water. You shot her? Yeah. They repeatedly told her to drop the pot when she wasn't holding it, so she grabs the pot to drop it in her confusion. Uh, that doesn't sound correct at all. It sounds like she was being very aggressive with the pot. I think her goal was to gr take the boiling pot and throw it on them. She was probably having like a mental health moment, or she was like having like a schizo, like psychosis moment, is my guess. But that didn't look like somebody who was confused. It looked like somebody who was moving with quite a bit of intentionality. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with blowing water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. Oh, okay. Right. So he did hear. And that's where he's landed. <clears throat> Just nothing right now. Just hang out out there for me. Thank you. I need to cry and put them around the corner of the house if you guys can. But other than that, that's not good. Thank you. I'm a nationally certified EMT. That guy was right. There's not much you can do. There's not much aside from CPR that you can do. You work them up until they are cold, dead. Okay. Me. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't know yeah. what happened. Do you think there's a responsibility of the cops to back off in that situation compared to closing the gap? Why would they do that? Uh, I, I don't know what the training or policy is. I don't know game theory wise, like what the best thing to do is. I have no idea. Um, it could be that um, if a suspect acts violent, there's like, it's just policies. You don't back away because if the suspect escapes or does something else, or if they've got violent warrants, I, I have no idea. I don't know what the department policy is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. This fucking bitch is crazy. <clears throat> Damn. Uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. I got some coming up. You got enough? If not, I got a roll. Gotta go home. Supposed to play some league tonight. Obviously charged with three counts when it was one person. Um, it could be that they just charged down the line. Like they charged for a second and then like manslaughter one and two or something. Maybe, I don't know. They might just do that. Let's go to the garbage cans. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, can't Trump be charged with insurrection? I don't know if we have, I don't even know how we would do that. Like there's like a crime for insurrection, but it doesn't even really say what insurrection is. It's pretty unclear in the statute. Inside with me. He's good. Yeah. That's my fault, man. I didn't know, I didn't know it was- No, a dude, it was good. I, it fucking happened so goddamn quick that we didn't have time to fucking call shit out that it was me and- Yeah, that's all we're- I was trying to figure out make sure we need to look someone. No, nah, we're good. I think she set it up on purpose. So, this is what it is. I have fucked choice. Try not to move that bag. We'll take her out on a backboard so we don't have to move that.
Yeah, he's good, dude. I Is made sure he was good. Yeah, he was here for the whole thing. No, 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 no. We barely got missed. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, grab the backboard. You can understand why everyone would be bothered that a cop who just shot a mentally ill woman and subsequently referred to as a bitch, right? This makes cops seem like terrible people. Um, yeah. I, we're, okay. The, my guess is going to be that after being in an event like this, your brain is probably scrambled for a little bit, and you're probably, like, barely even fucking aware of what's going on. So anybody that, like, is looking at anybody in a situation after this, this is why I'm banning everybody. Say, like, oh, they laughed? Yeah, people laugh when shit is, like, fucking crazy and unhinged and cr weird, and, like, people are nervous, and, that yeah, your brain is probably a little bit fucking frazzled, um, I would imagine, for at least a good, like, 10 or 15 minutes before you start to come back down to reality. So, yeah, I... He could also be a piece of shit too, but the people that like watch the cop videos and like, ah, 20 seconds after shooting, I can't believe he fucking like It's like, okay, I'm good. I'm gonna chill in my car. I'm gonna chill in my car for a minute. Can you at least agree that boiling water is a deadly weapon at least, or ask your chat what they think? Yeah, I mean, the boiling water can obviously be a deadly weapon. The, the, my assumption would be that the goal for the police officers would be to, um, the, to avoid situations like this. You want to control where the suspect is, or you want to control where a, a potential person is. Then she's not even a suspect right now. You, you need to be controlling people and environments better so that this type of stuff doesn't happen. Like, especially if she has warrants, which somebody said she did. I don't even know if that's true. They just put that in chat, right? Um, Especially um, if she has warrants, um, I, I'm not even going to deal with the deadly. I'm yeah, we're do what you want with that. I don't, I'm good on that. Um, but especially if she has warrants, I don't know why the police officers uh, would allow her to like dig through bags unobstructed. Would allow her to walk into her kitchen unobstructed. Um, like if you want to be like, there's either two things you can do. You can either be very calm and trustworthy of the person, in which case let her walk around and everything, but then you're not like pulling a gun as soon as she like touches a pot or you're still kind of like in a heightened state of alert, in which case, you know, she needs to grab something to do something. She's like, oh no, hey, like I'll, I'll grab it. Like, let me go, like, can you describe what you need me to get? I'll go in the room and get it. Or like, I'll walk with you. Um, or, you know, like you do something like that. You wouldn't just send somebody into the other room while you're still not sure about them because you're just, you're, as a police officer, you're putting yourself in a situation to where you're about to have to make a lot of really, 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 really hard calls. Um, and as a, as a police officer, right, like, like to do good police work in a scary environment isn't about making like James Bond crazy shots and crazy calls in the moment. It's about like preparing the environment and setting yourself up in a situation where everybody can be calm and chill and make very easy, simple decisions, right? That's why cops will like uh, handcuff people sometimes as part of like when they detain them to do an investigation, like, hey, sit here, let me cuff your hands, let me take a look, right? I'm not trying to see if you're trying to sneak a weapon out of the glove compartment, right? You do these things to prepare the environment so that everybody could be a little bit more calm, a little bit more chill, and there's not like a risk of crazy shit happening. Um, if you're not comfortable with this person and you shouldn't be because she's pretty crazy she sounds like she's fucking insane um i don't know why you would send her into the kitchen even ignoring the boiling water even ignoring the boiling water it already seems dumb i don't know why you would send her into this kitchen because she could have a gun she could have a knife she could have anything and she already seems a little bit fucking crazy so yeah i'm not i don't know that's i think that's like the biggest that's the biggest mistake that was made here It's the five P's rule. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Isn't that six P's? Are the rules against aiming for the head for cops? Once a cop is firing a weapon in the United States of America, my understanding is department policy is always you just shoot until the person goes down. You, uh, police officers in the United States and local police departments are not ever trained to shoot to disable. When a firearm that's using lethal ammunition is firing, you're just firing until the person goes down. There's no regard for trying to minimize damage. But OG, oh, I don't think she was legally detained. They couldn't give her a lawful order to stay sitting in her own home, no? They absolutely could have, yes. Police officers have, I, I'm pretty sure they have pretty wide deference when it comes to like feeling safe. 
like a cop might pull you out of a car or handcuff you while he's doing it while he's got you detained or whatever i think and, and then they can they, they could at least ask her too right like hey can you like sit down and like chill here or whatever like cops police officers at the very least they could make the verbal request um again i think i could be wrong but i think they do have the right to detain her because i believe she did make a 911 call and if she made the 911 call, I think that gives them enough like reasonable suspicion to perform some kind of investigation to figure out like, well, what was the 911 call for? Is the environment all safe and clear? Like they, so if, if the 911 call gives you the right to do an investigation, if that's probable cause for doing some kind of investigation, which, which I think it is, then, um, then they have the right to handcuff her and have her sit down for a minute. Or you don't even have to handcuff her. Just tell her to sit down and like put your hands on your knees and like just so you can see your hands and then just like chill and wait while the other cop like, uh, you know, grabs whatever she needs. But... Interviewing witnesses is not a detainment. Okay, we can look. If I call 911, can a cop detain me to investigate the call? A 911 call may constitute reasonable suspicion for police to detain an individual if the caller describes the totality of the circumstances such that there is sufficient reliability to what the caller describes and information of a, dead, of a serious enough crime to justify law enforcement stop or detention. This is about, um, I think this is about if you're identified in a 911 call as a suspect. Um, the audio lay on the ground. Yeah, this is, this is for you getting arrested when someone calls 911 and you match a uh, description. I don't know why everybody keeps saying she had a warrant. I don't know where that comes from. I don't see anything. Nobody's linked anything showing that she had a warrant. They'd still need a reasonable suspicion of a crime to detain. You can't detain for an investigation with an underlying crime. I feel like... I, intuitively, that just feels wrong to me. I've, I, I could be wrong. Someone doesn't link to me showing... Like, if somebody were to make a 911 call from within my apartment... Even if they hung up and they didn't say anything, I think a police officer, my guess would be they have the right to come to the apartment, knock, and come in and do a quick inspection. That'd be my guess, that if a cop shows up and somebody called 911 and it for sure came from in here, I can't tell the cop, no, we're good, fuck off. Like, you would have to, my guess is they would have a right to do a, do a quick investigation to see what was going on. That'd be my guess. Um, But I, I'm, if somebody wants to link me something different that says I'm wrong on that, I'm going to assume I'm correct on that without seeing anything different. I don't know why people keep... I'm just going to keep banning. Could a false police report be the underlying crime? Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait, never mind. Hold on. I understand what you're asking. That wasn't as retarded as I thought it was. My bad. I thought you were saying somebody called into the cops and lied. Um, could a false police report be the underlying crime? Um, I, I don't know. I don't think it has to be. It's just they, if you get a 911 call, I'm pretty sure the cops are allowed to just see what was going on. You're saved for now. Okay, thanks. Thank you for wasting our time on this. Yes.
I'm gonna grab a Red Bull. I think I'm debating him on Thursday. So when you get arrested and instantly start setting off all the officers, do you diddle the balls first to play the bit? Do you think if I if a cop is pointing a gun at you, okay, you show them your hands, you listen to your structure as cool as possible, and you chill. That's all you can do. What do you mean? Yeah. Hands come out? As opposed to what? You want to fight with them at your door? You just finished a coffee, you don't need a Red Bull? First of all, I'm pretty sure you fuckers drink like 12 coffees a day. Secondly, that was a hot chocolate, motherfucker. Cops can only enter your home under exigent circumstances if they have plain view of a criminal activity, if they have a search warrant, if the person is probation slash parole, or if it's a hot pursuit. There's no shot. Can a cop enter your home without a warrant if someone inside called 911? Let me check. Dude, Cora, why does it dominate? Like, so many Cora answers are so fucking dog shit. Okay, the random. You know what? Let's ask YouTube. If someone calls 911, can cops enter home without a warrant? For David Shapiro, he is a criminal defense attorney in San Diego, California. He's agreed to answer an online question specifically related to search and seizure or illegal search and seizure of a home. Uh, this question was from uh, Laura, David. Uh, David uh, Laura asked, Someone told me that the police can come into your house if they want to come in, or they can't, and they can't. You guys are bringing up swatting. I'm not talking about if you give, um, I'm not, I'm saying that, I'm not even talking about swatting. I'm just saying, I, I, my understanding is if there's a 911 call that originates from, an, from a house, that gives you enough reason right now, um, that gives you enough reason to do an investigation in the house. They don't have to swat you. It could just be a call that, like, 911 calls, and then you hang up, and I think they have a right to come in and investigate. I think, I believe they can, without, like, a search warrant. That creates a circumstance that allows them to come in, I think. Unless you tell them it's okay. There's a little confusion on the text there. She says, otherwise, is it illegal search and seizure? Is that true, or will they just come in anyway? Well, Laura, your house, if they want to come in, or Laura asks, someone told me that the police can come into your house if they want to come in, or they can't, and they can't, unless you tell them it's okay. There's a little confusion on the text there. She says, otherwise, is it illegal search and seizure? Is that true, or will they just come in anyway? Well, Laura, there's a couple of situations where even without your consent, the police can certainly enter your home. And the first and the most um, obvious one would be search warrant. That's number one with the warrant. Yeah. One is going to be a warrant. Two is going to be the 911 call. Three is going to be from the outside. There's reasonable suspicion that there's criminal activity. That's what he's going to say. So if the police get a warrant to search a home to search property, whatever the case may be. I mean, you could stomp your feet. You could say no till you're blue in the face. But the reality is they're going to be able to come inside that house uh, under the guise of the warrant. Now, whether or not that's a legally sufficient warrant, whether or not they search outside the scope of the warrant, that's a whole other issue for another day. But I can tell you that if they're going to get a warrant and they have a warrant, they're going to come into that house no matter what you say. Now, even if you uh, even if they don't have a warrant, you know, there's certain exceptions for them having a warrant to be able to come in. You know, I will say, though, <laughs> careful. Woo! I'm giving, this is uh, uh, legal advice that I am wholly unqualified to give, so be aware of your local laws and everything else, okay? Just be aware of this, okay? My understanding is that on a search warrant, the search warrant is supposed to specify a thing they're looking for and a location they're searching in, I believe. So if they've got a warrant to come in and search in a bedroom and the cop asks if they can, like, go through their entire fucking house, you only have to let them search what's on the warrant, I believe, okay? Call your lawyer and check your rights beforehand, but just because they show up with a warrant, um, the warrant, yeah, the warrant could also be like very broad though and give them, but just be aware, okay? Read the warrant first. Listen, always ask to see a copy of the warrant and make sure that it's an official warrant, okay, before the cops come in. Otherwise, you might end up in this situation.
come on, let's feed her. Fuck guy. And now she got robbed. See? Don't get robbed by the cops, okay? Ask to see the warrant first. If they think someone's generally in danger, if they think that, um, you know, an ongoing crime is committed, if someone flees into your house, those types of situations usually are how they're legally allowed to get around the warrant or the consent requirement. But, you know, it's always, it's always a good idea to refuse admission or to not give your consent. Uh, it makes it more difficult for the police to get inside your house. And if they do come inside your house anyway, it might give your case a chance, assuming they find something they, that, are, that is illegal and you ultimately get charged in court. Yeah, so like you can tell a cop, hey, listen, if a cop shows up even with a warrant, you can say like, I don't consent to you coming in the house. I don't want you in here, right? And the cop's like, okay, well, I'm coming anyway. Get fucked, right? And on the off chance that like the warrant isn't legitimate or they go to a place they're not supposed to, um, you, d you don't want to hurt your case by saying like, okay, fine, yeah, you can come in because maybe they come in and maybe the warrant was fucked or something else, but now you consented and it makes your case that much harder. Um, when people, it's kind of, I don't know if this would be immoral advice, For a criminal conviction, the state has the burden to prove a crime has been committed beyond a reasonable doubt. Don't act in ways that helps them build their case. Make them prove their case. Should always be your default movement through life. The fact that you did not affirmatively consent to them coming inside your house gives yourself and your attorney another avenue to explore as to possibly an illegal search and seizure. And we all know that if the search was illegal or outside the scope of the warrant or without your consent and no other justified basis for the search, Everything found as a result of that goes away. And more often than not, the prosecutor is left with really not a whole lot to prosecute. And that's a good thing for you. Excellent. Well, if you have any other questions for David, just post them in the comments section below. Uh, thanks for the answer, David. He didn't answer. Fuck you. Oh, yes, waste all my time today. Yes. Michigan v. Fisher, 2009. Court case. Police officers responded to a complaint of a disturbance near Allen Road in Brownstown, Michigan. Officer Christopher Goolsby, Goonsby, later testified that as he and his partner approached the area, a couple directed them to a residence where a man was going crazy. Upon their arrival, the officers found a household in considerable chaos, a pickup truck in the driveway with its front smashed, damaged fence posts along the side of the property, and three broken house windows, the glass still on the ground outside. The officers also noticed blood on the hood of the pickup and on clothes inside of it, as well as on one of the doors to the house. It's disputed whether they noticed this immediately upon reality. Through a window, the officers could see respondent Jeremy Fisher inside the house, screaming and throwing things. The back door was locked, and a couch had been placed to block the front door. Christ. Do tourists in the U.S. also enjoy protections like the Fourth Amendment, or am I rarely fucked? Do they want to search my rental? I don't think if you're a tourist, I don't know if you have any, I don't know what those rights look like in the U.S. I have no idea at all, actually. I should know that, considering I have, like, foreign girlfriends and wives and shit. <laughs> I should know that. I actually don't know. The officers knocked, but Fisher refused to answer. They saw that Fisher had a cut on his hand, and they asked him whether he needed medical attention. He ignored these questions and demanded with accompanying profanity that the officers go to get a search warrant. There's no shot they needed one here, right? I'm so, wait, what was the ruling for this? Officer Goolsby then pushed the front door partway open and ventured into the house. Through the window of the open door, he saw Fisher pointing a long gun at him. Officer Goolsby withdrew. The Constitution covers everyone, tourists or illegal immigrants, the same. Is that true? Fisher was charged under Michigan law with assault with a dangerous weapon and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. The trial court concluded that Officer Goolsby violated the Fourth Amendment when he entered Fisher's house and granted Fisher's motion to suppress the evidence obtained as a result. Wow, okay. Officer Goolsby's statement that Fisher pointed a rifle at him, the Michigan Court of Appeals initially remanded for an evidentiary hearing Okay, so they appealed it once from the trial court. Trial court means where it's originally tried, I imagine. So it's tried in criminal court um, at the, what is it going to be, at the county level? What court are you, I don't actually know all the, the state. It's probably different per fucking state. Fuck states. Um, Michigan Court of Appeals initially remanded for an evidentiary hearing. So that means that it was appealed up the chain one time, and then the court said we need more evidence to make a determination here or something, or they need to consider it. I think generally 
I think that, um, ooh, fuck, is Bisco here? I think generally appeals courts, I know this is true for federal appeals, I don't know if it's true for, um, I don't know if it's true for state courts. Um, I think that um, appellate courts generally don't consider novel fact, they only consider questions of law. Um, so you can't like present new evidence to an appeals court, or if you're making an argument in an, in an appeal court or in an appellate court that requires like different like factual evidence or whatever to you know be considered, then that's going to always be remanded to a lower court first for them to do that consideration, and then if they want to appeal again, then it'll go back up to the appellate court. But um, yeah, okay. The Michigan Supreme Court granted leave to appeal. Um, but after hearing oral argument, it vacated its prior order. Wait, hold on, I'm sorry. After which the court, uh, the trial court reinstated its order. Wait, okay, I'm sorry. Trial court concluded that he violated the Fourth Amendment. The Michigan Court of Appeals initially remanded for an evidentiary hearing, after which the trial court reinstated its order. So the trial court did the evidentiary hearing, and they said, okay, yep, we think that still, I think we were right. The Court of Appeals um, then affirmed over a dissent by Judge Talbot, okay, so then it was appealed once again, and the appellate court, the first Court of Appeals said, no, we agree with the lower court, I believe. Then it got appealed again, I guess, to the Michigan Supreme Court, granted leave to appeal, meaning that if you grant leave to appeal, that means that you're allowed to appeal, is that what that means? Application for leave to appeal is a request made to an appellate court asking them to hear an appeal from a judgment when the party has no automatic right to appeal or in the time, okay, granted leave. So you're given permission to, okay. But after hearing oral argument, it vacated its prior order and denied leave instead. Michigan Supreme Court, okay, so they heard an oral, so they heard oral arguments and then they vacated their own order for leave to appeal and denied leave instead. Okay, so they heard the oral argument, and the oral argument is real bad, and they're like, actually, we don't even want to hear this case. I don't know why that is a thing, but okay. Um, but okay. Um, three justices. Destiny streams are always so wild. If you miss five minutes, you're deep into civil procedure. Uh, this is criminal law. Thank you. Okay. Three justices, however, would have taken the case and reversed on the ground that the Court of Appeals misapplied the Fourth Amendment because the decision of the Michigan Court of Appeals is indeed contrary to our Fourth Amendment case law, particularly Brigham County, uh, City v. Stewart, we grant the state's petition for certiorari and reverse. Okay, Jesus. Interesting, okay. So it was appealed up to the Michigan Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, nah, fuck you, actually. We think we agree with the lower court, and then somehow, well, then I guess it was appealed to... Uh, if you're appealing through the state courts and, you, and you're not happy with the decision of a state Supreme Court, then the appeal from there goes right to the, um, right to the U.S. Supreme Court. You don't go through uh, district court, circuit court, then Supreme Court. You go right to the Supreme Court after, I believe, right? Um, the ultimate touchstone of the Fourth Amendment, we have often said, is reasonableness. Therefore, although searches and seizures inside a home without a warrant are presumptively unreasonable, that presumption can be overcome. For example, the exigencies... Uh, of a situation make the needs of law enforcement so compelling that the warrantless search is objectively reasonable. But this case doesn't seem like, do they touch on like a 911 call? This is just showing destiny was wrong. It's defining exigent circumstances. Calling number one hanging up would not meet the standard laid out here. Not a close issue. What, what part of this has said anything about me being wrong? I don't even know if this is touching on the question that we asked. I don't even know how relevant this is, unless they talk about it in the uh, exigent. Is it exigent? Exigent. Exigent. There you go. Okay, somebody also cited Lapace Lapis v. State. state of Florida. Okay, I don't care about this. I don't care about this this much. Fuck you guys. What do you... Oh, okay. We've got warrants. Okay.
Okay. Don't care. Don't care. Jesus Christ. It depends entirely on the 911 call. Um, okay, maybe. I don't think it does, but I could be wrong on that. I know that like a super violent 911 call would would almost certainly give them the right to go in, but I my thought my feeling was that any 911 call would But okay. <laughs> 